Hi guys, this week I'm going to show you how to make this scalloped cake. This is a two part video, so this week is just about making the actual scalloped cake and getting it onto its side, and then next week will be all those finishing touches. Now this cake caught me off guard, it is the most trust the process cake I think I've probably ever made. So starting off I've got these lovely scalloped ganache plates and I'm just spreading a little bit of ganache and then laying down a circle of greaseproof paper to stop my ganache plate from sticking to all the ganache I'm about to lay on top of it as the base for my cake. So as you can see I'm being really generous with the ganache here, this is because the bottom of this cake is going to end up being either the front or the back of the actual cake once it's stood up so I'm doing a thick layer. I put that in the freezer to chill till it's completely set and then spread a very thin layer of ganache over it and then lay my first cake layer down on top. And then it was just a case of adding in my filling and building up my cake layers as usual. I picked the softest cake and the softest filling I possibly could for this. It was the worst combination for a cake that was going to be standing on its side, but it all worked out okay. Thank God for ganache. So once I'd got all my filling in, I just chilled the cake a bit and then I started layering with ganache. So this is just a normal crumb coat, thin layer of ganache, and then it goes into the freezer to fully firm up. And then I added a thicker layer of ganache all around the side of the cake and then on top of the cake. And this top layer again is going to either be the front or the back of my cake once it's stood up on its end. So another greaseproof disc and the top ganache plate goes on. Now I'm just using a scrape here to try and make sure that my top and my bottom ganache plates are lined up because that was really difficult to do with the scalloped edges. So I'm just using a very tall scraper to make sure that the top and the bottom are roughly in line. Now I made a load of ganache for this cake and I'm talking two and a half kilos of ganache and it still wasn't enough. So my cake is eight inches and these ganache plates are 8.25 inches but I believe that is from inside the scallops so I just really underestimated how much ganache I was going to need here. So I used everything I had and then once I was past this stage I had to go and buy more ingredients, make more ganache, wait for that to firm up and set and then carry on with the cake. So this was like an all day affair but with this first layer I piped it all on, smoothing it round and then I'm just doing my initial foundation of those scallop layers. So I'm taking my scrape around and removing as much ganache as I can from in between those scallops. Now I don't know if you caught that there but my ganache plates were sliding around. I had to lift these up and add more ganache underneath to actually hold them in place because what a nightmare that would be if I did the whole cake and every single turn my ganache plates are moving. They're actually not in line at all so I just had to add a bit more ganache. So that's something just to be aware of. So basically this whole cake process is just adding ganache, scraping it off, adding ganache, scraping it off until you get the right depth that you haven't got huge gaps in it, until the finish is looking fairly decent. At the moment this is looking so rough and I was thinking I, how am I ever going to get this looking nice but it is a trust the process thing. You just keep going and keep going and at some point you'll do your last scrape and it'll be like oh my god it actually it looks okay. It's clean, it's tidy, it's neat so just keep on adding the ganache and scraping it away. I was chilling my cake in between these layers as well so I was adding the ganache, scraping it off with a scraper and then chilling the cake and then adding more ganache and repeating the process. And you can see it is starting, just starting to neaten up and actually take shape but it is a very long and time consuming process. So the whole time I'd been using my extra tall metal scraper and then I realised my shorter one might actually just fit and it did just fit and when I switched to this one it was a lot easier. So I would suggest going with the shortest scraper you can get away with that's still going to cover the depth of your cake because it's much much easier to handle than a big scraper pulling round. So I'm going to leave this bit of the actual speed that I was scraping the ganache at to show you just how time consuming it is. And at this part I've really got all the ganache on there that I need to get on there. You can see that scallop shape is completely there, it's just neatening it up. If you look between the sort of petal parts of the ganache plates there's some thick ganache towards the bottom and I'm just working to scrape that away to make sure the petals are really defined. And also cleaning my scraper between each petal that I'm doing as well. The key is just keeping the scraper nice and clean, taking your time and then this is the stage that will really need in that scallop shape up. It was then time to remove the top ganache plate so just using my tiny palette knife to do that. So lifting the ganache plate off, lifting the greaseproof paper off and then adding ganache to make this side look nice and neat. This was the side that I thought would be the front of my cake. So I'm just adding another layer of ganache and then I'll use my big tool scraper to scrape across it and neaten that off. I've then used a palette knife to go around the edge to smooth off the parts of the ganache that have now overlapped the edge. And then I've chilled that so the ganache that's gone back up onto the top is now nice and hard. And I'm going around with my mini palette knife just to scrape those bits away. Now I'm marking my line for where I want to cut my cake to tip it up onto its side. And then just making that cut. And you can see here just how thick that ganache is on the outside. That is a lot of ganache. So I'm just scraping away this front bit because we don't need that. 
and then loosening the cake off of the bottom ganache plate. Spreading some ganache onto my board that I'm going to actually display the cake on and then luckily because this is ganache, I can manhandle this cake. That's been in the freezer, I can pick it up, I can do what I want with it, it's very, very firm, so that's very handy. And then this is the back of the cake, that's the bit that I've just pulled off the bottom ganache plate. So again, just spreading more ganache over that and then I use my tool scraper to smooth that off and I'm sorry, worst angle ever here, but I couldn't get my body to where my cameras were in order to do it the other way around. So same as what I did with the top of the cake, I'm just doing it on the side of the cake. Again, I chilled the cake so the ganache that had overflown the edge firmed up and I could trim it away with my palette knife. And then the last stage to get this cake ready for decoration was just to really smooth everything out. So for that, I used a palette knife dipped in hot water and spread that over the ganache. So anywhere I felt I needed to even out the texture, I just used a very, very hot, wet palette knife and just kept re-dipping into the hot water between every section that I was doing. And that's basically the process. I feel this sped up video has not done it justice, just how long and time consuming this cake was. But that is how to make a scallop cake. Hopefully you can join me next week when I show you how I decorated this cake and put all the finishing touches on it. But for now, thanks for joining me this week and I will see you again soon. Bye.